Oh, jeez, please. Thanksgiving is probably one of my favorite holidays. Just the sheer amount of food just skyrockets it up a few ranks. And Axel and I wanted to share this American tradition with our friends. Maddie graciously allowed us to uh, use her kitchen and to help us cook because I've never cooked a single thing in my life. The last time I tried to cook chicken, I almost gave myself and Hugo salmonella. So here was the plan. Me and Axel would pick up the ham at 10 a.m. Um, because turkey isn't in season, sadly, then go over to the girl's place to put in the ham at 12 p.m. I would stay with Maddie to cook mashed potatoes, gravy, stuffing, and cranberry sauce. Axel would go over to his place at 2 p.m. with V to cook the pies, the roasted carrots, sweet potato casserole, basically everything else that needed to be baked but couldn't be baked at Maddie's because the ham was in there and the ham was taking up so much space. All of the food convened at Bergamot at 5.30. We'd set the table, warm the food, guests would arrive at 6 p.m. for cocktails and arts and crafts, and dinner would begin at 7 p.m. Good plan. This is what actually happened. Ham secured, but Axel doesn't wake up until 11 a.m. Axel comes over to the girl's place. We put the ham in. Yay! We go get groceries. I'm a dumbass. It's now almost three o'clock, and we have a dinner ready at like six. Timeline today. Yeah. The original timeline. Groceries at 10 a.m. Then we start cooking at 12. Then we go move the food from where we're cooking to the actual place that we're eating. But we're cooking at two different places. Because we don't have enough space in the oven for everything. So at 5.30, we're gonna converge into the dining place. We're also cooking a few things there. At six, guests start arriving. And then at seven, dinner is supposed to start. Mm. We have how many hours? We need to have all the hot dishes cooked in two hours, two and a half hours. And how many? <laughs> we have, we have no, no How many dishes? dishes? <laughs> we have a ham in the oven and that's about it. I'm sorry to freak out. In for your nose. Yeah, but we have like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a pie dish. 5.30 p.m. rolls around. Mateo is here to pick up the ham. The problem is, the ham is at 100 degrees Celsius. It's supposed to be at 160 degrees, and dinner is supposed to happen in an hour and a half. I take everything that's done. I go over to Axel's, get everything that's done over there, and then go take it to Bergamot. The problem is... Just a sauce. Okay, I've, sauce I've sauce in my pants. I go home quickly to change my pants. Guests have already arrived. The ham is nowhere near done. But Sophia and Francie are now entertaining the guests with arts and crafts and family feud. So they should buy us some time. The time is 7.42 p.m. Dinner should have started 42 minutes ago. Everyone is already getting a little feisty. So we decided to transfer the ham over from the girl's place to Bergamot, pop it in the oven, let it warm, and then start the meal so at least we're all together. Operation Ham Transfer is a go. And we go get Axel with his garden salad and head over to the girls. And somehow, miraculously, the moment we get to the girls, the ham is at 160 degrees. We drive back and we serve dinner. And after everyone started to eat and I started to, to calm down, I just looked around, around the table, and I thought of a conversation I had with my friends a few weeks ago. At least for me, because we have so, so little time here, then I always try to make sure that I try to savor every moment. On the inverse side of that, <laughs> what I often find is that because I want to enjoy every single yeah. moment, because I'm, I, I'm in France mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm having this crazy experience that when I do something very mundane, say I sleep in mm -hmm. or say I just like have some free time and decide to just sit and chill instead of like yeah. doing something, going to a museum, taking mm -hmm. a walk, having a baguette, yeah. like, then, I, then I feel like I missed out. Then I, then I feel like, oh shit, yeah, I, I, I like, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't take advantage. I could have. I get sat that. on my phone in the States, but no, I'm in France. I wouldn't actually say that like those boring days where we at university the whole day are like not relevant or like not completing this this experience. Because like in those days you also have those tiny moments during class or like mm -hmm. during the break or like those coffee breaks where you're just talking to a person that you met like two months ago. I think that's like that contemplates to this experience. Yeah, I agree with Paul with like that the 
the mundane days they're they're still like as valuable as like the big experiences yeah because so far like when i think about just different memories that i've had that I, like it's often it's not from like big events you know that's why it's it's so different being like an exchange student and living here as mm -hmm. opposed to do traveling here and when mm -hmm. we when we first came it felt like yeah. i was a tourist here like it felt yeah. like this mm -hmm. i was so out of place here i didn't know anyone mm -hmm. i was constantly like just discovering how to like live basic parts of my life i still am but now like we're comfortable here mm -hmm. but yeah. We were comfortable here because we've had these affirming experiences yeah. because we yeah. go day in and day out and we do the, the same things and we see the same people and we yeah. have our routine and we have our place and now and I'll see it feels it feels like home. Like and I think there's a difference between being comfortable at a place and feeling at home at a place. And those friendships and those relationships that we create, like you said, those little special moments are what makes this place feel like home more than anything else. And the reason why I was reminded of that conversation with my friends was because as I was, you know, sitting at the at the dinner table, just looking at all these people that I've met just in the past three months, but have impacted my life so tremendously and have made this experience just so amazing for me was because I was just thinking about all of the small little moments that I've shared with them. And I couldn't help but feel grateful for that. And I, and I just had a very similar moment. Today is December 16th. Um, yesterday we just finished our exams. And so it's been a hectic, you know, busy month we haven't had time to just you know sit and 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 relax and be with each other right we've just been studying literally for the past month but today i just got back home from our farewell luncheon because a few of us the girls and paul um they're only staying here for the semester they're going to be leaving soon um, and this was the last time that we'd all be together you know after lunch we we waved Hugo goodbye on the train because he's going home for winter break he's coming back but he's going home and then me and Paul went to McCarthy's one last time for a crepe. We went and got a kebab for the last time together. And Paul had said something that, that stuck with me, that he said that this moment was like a screenshot moment. It was a moment that, you know, he didn't want to try to recreate ever again because it was just so perfect and he didn't want to ruin it. And now I, I'm, I'm processing that these people who have made this place feel like home for me are leaving and I have to say goodbye to them. And I always suck at goodbyes. Um, and we knew this going into it that you know, our time was be, was going to be limited, you know, and that we have to savor every moment. And we knew that Paul and the girls were leaving and we had time to just emotionally prepare for that, but it still doesn't help the fact that it hurts, you know? But now, the only thing we can do is just be thankful and be grateful for those people. Be thankful for the small moments. I'm so thankful.